also known as the Nation Hammer of the Magic Wheel, the Jackhammer is a power tool used to break concrete, pavement, or even rocks. Its effectiveness depends on how much force is applied to the tool, so you must be really strong to use one. The first Jackhammer was invented in 1848, used mostly in mines for breaking rocks. Before Jackhammer was invented, miners used in engines, but they are not just ineffective because of their need to use fire to operate and the ventilation in mines and tunnel was inadequate to bend the fire fumes. Hi, so now I will tell you about the main component of the road breaker. So, as you can see here, it's the handle of the road breaker. The main function of the handle of the road breaker is for the operator to easily operate the machine itself. So as, as we can see here, here is the low pressure nitrogen chamber. The main function of the low pressure nitrogen chamber is to absorb excessive vibration and convert it into energy for the machine itself. So the small part here is the frequency adjusting valve. The main function of the frequency adjusting valve is to allow regulating energy of the stroke according to hardness of the rod, the rod and the, the hammer here. So the next part is the holder of the hammer. The main concern of the holder is to hold the hammer itself. And here is the hammer. The function of the hammer is to break the rock. So as you can see here is the outer body of the machine. It comes with an absorber. So it can completely insulate the power you need and it functions for the low noise and low vibration. So the next part is the auto greasing system. So the auto greasing system functions to grease the machine so that it helps the operator to grease the machine. And the last part is the pressure adjusting valve. Pressure adjusting valve uh, works to adjust the pressure of the machine. First, piston may damage due to improper position of the tool. Apply same direction of boom force in line with the tool and, and place the tool in the rock with hammering surface as vertical as possible. If hammering surface is oblique, the tool may slip during hammering and force the piston to overwork and lastly damage itself. Second, oil leaking. This happens when hydraulic pipes for the breaker or the oil horse are loose or damaged. The solution is to retighten securely and replace seriously damaged parts. Tool wear or broken. This cause of the non-stop of using the rod breaker within time. With overuse it over time, it can wear out the tools and give danger to surrounding people. And lastly, low impact power. This happened because of lack of hydraulic oil, clock tank return line filter, poor main pump performance, low flow rate by misadjustment of flow control pressure reduction valve. We can overcome this problem by wash or replace the filter, fill hydraulic oil, service pump and adjust reduction valve. They are the segmental uh, exposure and the whole body vibration exposure. The segmental vibration exposure is the uh, vibration exposure that is mainly transmitted to uh, a focused part of the body. Uh, whereby the whole body exposure is the exposure to the whole body of the worker. Okay. They are factor of factor affecting risk of hand arm variation syndrome. Uh, that is the risk of developing hand arm vibration syndrome, how quickly the symptom of the hand arm and the speed of onset. Lastly, there are hand arm vibration syndrome. Typical symptoms of the hand arm vibration syndrome is the tingling in the finger, reduced grip strength and pain when exposed to force. That's all.
this is the free body diagram of the rod breaker this is the input force uh, ft this is the output force fe uh, this is the whole mass the damper uh, the, the spring and the movement of the rod breaker which is uh, into the ground so next is the equation of motion for the input which is uh, mx dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to ft and this is the output uh, equation of motion with uh, where the cx dot plus kx is equal to fe so this is the control transmission path where the output is divided by input where the fe the output force uh, divided by ft the input force so we key in the cx dot plus kx where the output uh, force uh, divided by mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx and we divide and we will get this uh, equation cx j omega plus kx over m uh, negative x omega square plus cx j omega plus kx the equation is sub by the x ej omega for x x dot is equal to x j omega ej omega t x double dot is equal to negative x uh, omega square ej omega t because uh, this is the rotational and the road breaker is moving in rotational okay after we simplify the equation we will uh, put the x uh, over there and as over there and we will get to simplify to next equation after that uh, we put we replace the c with uh, 2 zeta k over omega n m with a k over omega n square and c again 2 zeta k over omega n and we will get this all uh, equation Next, uh, we simplify the equation with uh, we put the k outside and we will get this equation into this. Okay. Uh, we need to square root of the equation because j is a complex number, so we will get square root of one square plus uh, two zeta omega over omega n square root then same with uh, and below uh, the, the, non, the denominator we need to square root because we need to eliminate the j which is the real number so we get this equation and the denominator we need to square root to eliminate the real number also and then we will get a new which is this 1 plus 4 zeta square omega over omega n square over 1 minus omega n square square plus 4 omega square omega over omega n square okay so we need to know when resonant the frequency of the road is equal to the frequency of the rod breaker so we need to know that omega is equal to omega n we need to replace the omega with omega n and we will get this equation 1 plus 4 zeta square over 1 minus 1 square square plus 4 zeta square and we simplify and we'll get this equation another simplification and this is the final answer When operating a jet hammer, it is important to note always keep the leaf axis on the left hand side between the operator and the jet hammer. A typical mistake made by people the first time they use the leaf axis is hovering over the jet hammer. Although this is the common technique when using the jet hammer, it will limit the efficiency of the leaf axis. Instead, keep the jet hammer at safe distance from the body by extending your arms to a comfortable length from the body. Remember, 
you no longer have to pull the bees out of the ground. Let the leaf acid do the work for you. Keep in mind, the leaf acid is designed to assist with the lifting of the jackhammer while operating, as the standard procedure. Always avoid burying the jackhammer bit. Upon return to the surface, use the lifting rod to pull the bit out of the ground, just enough to clear out the debris. If you extend the rod too far, the jet hammer will walk around the surface. When cutting up permethrin, it is recommended working from right to left. This keeps the distance from the work surface shorter and provides better view of the leaf as its food. Once the permethrin cut has been made, you are ready to begin working up the surface.